So in the world of mobile gaming, there's this game studio called Pomelo Games, and they've made one of my all-time favorite endless games called Mars Mars. So naturally, I really like these developers, but today though, I found out that they had betrayed me. They had betrayed me. They had released another game back in 2017 that they hadn't told me about, and I completely missed the release of this game, and it just so happens to be an amazing game. So I'm a bit sad that I didn't see it back in 2017, but I'm also just thrilled to be able to share it with you all here today. Now, if you're new around here be sure to have a look around the channel by the way and if you'd love yourself some more mobile gaming goodness then feel free to subscribe to join the best community for mobile gaming right here on YouTube. So Once Upon a Tower is the name of this game and I've seen it described online as sort of a vertical mining platformer which I guess to some extent is a good way of describing the game even though we don't actually mine ores as much as we just stick down through the floors of a tower filled with dirt, filled with creatures, filled with fire-breathing stone figurines of a dragon head. Thematically, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense that you would have a tower filled up with dirt. But don't think too much about that though, because the gameplay, <laughs> the gameplay makes up for it. Trust me, the gameplay is amazing and we're gonna dig into that in this video. But I also just love the atmosphere of this game, by the way. The 3D models of the characters we play as admittedly aren't incredibly detailed, but the overall atmosphere of the game is really well executed. And there's just been a lot of attention to details in this game. Everything from the animations when we attack creatures or when we hit fireflies to the way that we transition from one level to another that you guys probably saw before. And if you didn't notice it, you'll get to see it very soon again, where we hopefully transition from level two or floor Floor 2 to floor 3, but all of that happens without a loading screen. And the same thing goes for when we go from the main menu back to a level. That transition also happens without a loading screen. And here we go, we fell down to level 3 now. To me at least, all those small things are what makes the game feel truly polished. So I'm excited to see that we've got that here in Once Upon a Tower. Now between levels, we have the option of buying an upgrade. So right now we have 830 gold and that actually gives us enough to buy any of these upgrades. So I want to get the fire hammer, take down enemies from a distance. So I simply swipe up and now this is exciting. Now we should be able to take down, well, that spider there is pretty easy to take out regardless. But as you guys can see now, we can stand over here and swipe to the left and we're able to attack tiles two steps away from us. This is exciting. Now we should have a much easier time dealing with uh, all the upcoming enemies and that dragon. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. So that's of course the dragon we're escaping from because yes, of course, there's a dragon controlling this tower here. Now the swipe controls work really well as well, by the way, no pun intended. We simply swipe left and right and well, we can also swipe up and down. We can't really move up though, but we can attack something above us if we're below something. And then, you know, we just have to keep going down and down and down. And the goal here is to, of course, just get to the end of the tower because unlike a game like, for example, Subway Surfers, this game is not an endless game. You can actually finish the game, which is what really excites me as well. I am down to, well, this is a new record actually. I am down to floor number four now. Now, very much like in Subway Surfers though, we do want to complete this game's challenges as they increase our score multiplier. And you know, the score multiplier actually doesn't unlock any sort of progression in this game. It's simply just there so that we can get a higher high score and be able to brag about that online or when we connect with either Google Play or the App Store uh, high score system, whatever that's called. The name kind of escapes me right now. But that's the only reason to complete the challenges in this game. And right now our challenges are roast two enemies with bombs. So I guess we should have bought the bomb upgrade before and complete a level without hitting, oh, that's a tricky one, without hitting fireflies. Interesting. Now we do typically actually want to get as many of these fireflies as we possibly can because no, no, we got ourselves killed. I didn't see that. But as I was saying though, before we died, we want to collect as many fireflies as possible as these fireflies add up to filling up this jar. And when that jar is fully filled up, we unlock a new hero. Now these heroes are purely cosmetic by the way, but it's still cool to be able to unlock all of them. And we've got this awesome little family tree here where we can see all the different ones. We have got Rita, we've got Beth. Well, we don't have them yet, but we will unlock those in the future though. Already we do have both Ada though, which is the character you start out with, Linda, Sigrid, and Delilah. So I'm using Delilah right now, but I actually think Sigrid looks even cooler. Look at this. This is a <laughs> this is a typical Viking character. So now I can feel like I'm really connecting with my ancestors, the Nordic Vikings. Great people, by the way. Completely misunderstood. You should get to know them. You'll love them. Well, I guess they did have a tendency to burn down villages. So forget that. Maybe it's okay we got rid of those guys. Now, unlike this game's previous game, Mars Mars or Subway Surface or any of the other endless games out there, this game, Once Upon a Tower, 
actually isn't an endless game. So that means that we can actually escape the tower if we don't die just as I just did now again again, seriously. Which is really cool by the way. Now I just really wanna figure out what happens when we escape the tower, how long is it gonna take, how many floors are there. I don't know the answer by the way. I read someone online reaching floor 11 without having uh, escaped the tower yet. So I guess it's a rather challenging thing to do, but maybe some of you guys have already played this game and have already escaped, in which case be sure to let us all know in the comment section down below how far you had to get to escape the tower. Now what I find really intriguing about Once Upon a Tower is that I think the biggest challenge in this game is actually the fact that I tend to stress myself about constantly progressing faster. I'm pretty sure I could just take it easy, be careful, consider my every move, and that would probably increase my chances of getting further down in this tower, but for some reason though, it's just a lot more fun just to bash through the levels as fast as you can, and that's the real beauty of this game. It tricks us into tricking ourselves into thinking that we're in a rush, and that is what makes us make mistakes when we try to rush it, and that's why this game is fun, that's why it's challenging, and that's why you hate yourself after playing it. <laughs> because you feel like, oh, I should have just gone slow and easy. Why did I rush this? And that's what I love about the game. But what about the monetization then? Maybe that's horrible. Well, we've only got a few in-app purchases for buying additional lives, but that's pretty much it for the in-app purchases. Apart from that, we can watch a single advertisement to revive once per attempt at completing this tower. Only once though, so we won't be watching endless amounts of uh, advertisements. And I haven't even seen a single forced advertisement yet either. So I'm really liking this very relaxed monetization system. Yet another thing I like about this game. But that's just my opinion though. Let me know what you think about Once Upon a tower in the comment section down below. Have you played it already? And if not, is this your type of game? In either case, I'm sure you'll let me know down below because it's now time to move on to the mobile gaming news of the day, which is this little nugget of news that I always end off my videos with. And today's news is that mobile gaming as a whole is set to surpass $100 billion in total revenue in 2020. That's according to a new report by App Annie at least. And in the same report, the company has also revealed that money spent on mobile games in 2019 surpassed all other gaming platforms combined by more than 25%. That's just crazy. Mobile games earn so much money, guys. But uh, let's end it off on that note. I hope you've had a blast here today with this video. Thank you very much for watching it till the very end. Now do me a favor and leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help show YouTube that these videos are worth promoting so that we can grow our mobile gaming community. But most importantly of all, of course, until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.